Hey there, happy Monday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Pacific and 6.30 Eastern. Uh, and uh, it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about... That's not right. Sorry, you guys. It's 9.30 Eastern and uh, 6.30 Pacific. That sounds better. I'm like, wait a sec. That's in the West. <laughs> so, all right, you guys. I am here every weeknight at that time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. Uh, so thanks again for joining me. We are continuing on the Splendid Sampler 2. Ooh, Stephanie, you just started your first Splendid Sampler block. Nice! Awesome. Let me know which one you're doing. Um, we are continuing on the Stitch and Pause block tonight. This is full of everything. It has... Uh, it has piecing, just normal fabric piecing. It has um, needle turn applique, that's what we're working on right now, and it has embroidery too. So we are working on the needle turn applique part. So we have it all sewn together. We got our cute little checked border there, and we are putting on all these itty bitty tiny tiny leaves. Uh, and then we will be continuing and putting on these tiny little paws, these little baby paws on it too. So tiny pieces. Uh, we're starting with the leaves because they're a little bit easier, I think, than the uh, um, than these paws are going to be. So we're going to finish up, I think we're going to finish the last two leaves tonight, and then we'll be starting on... Uh, um, the pause. So tomorrow night, so in my email today, I let you guys know that we are going to be starting a new project tomorrow. It'll be kind of sporadic here and there, uh, and it'll go pretty quick, but I think it's going to be super cute. It's by Betts White, the designer Betts White, and it's her a Lil Felt Village make-along, and she just released her next piece for that and is the spooky clock tower and it's made out of felt and it has embroidery on and it's an actual 3d uh like little mini house almost it's kind of like those ceramic houses that people have at uh during the holidays and stuff so um it is that so uh tomorrow i'm going to show you what i am getting from joanne's so in tomorrow's email be sure to check tomorrow's email it will have um, you getting all the supplies from Joann's in there if you wanted to find the supplies there. And if you wanted to participate, you have to be part of Betz's, um the make-along. So I have a link if you want to join in, uh, if you want to link and get all the, all the patterns. So she has spring ones and summer ones, just like 12 different uh, of these little cute little houses. So anyway, we will be starting that tomorrow. I'll show you everything I got from Joann's. And we will start doing the felt prep work. So after that, we're we're gonna wait until she releases the stitching and until she releases the assembly. So it is not all at once. It will um, come sporadically a little over the next couple of weeks. But tomorrow, I'll show you all the stuff I got uh, and uh, how you can find it at your Joann's. Uh, she uh, Bet says some kits as well if you didn't want to do all that. But I'm gonna show you how you can find it. And uh, I'll show it to you uh, tomorrow evening here, uh, and, uh, and we'll get started. So, all right, then we'll be back on, on this block um, in the meantime while we are waiting for the next part of the release to happen, uh, the stitching part. So uh, thanks again for joining me, you guys. Uh, there is a embroidery giveaway happening as well, so be sure to click the link below for more information on that. So let's get to work. I want to get these leaves done. Okay, I want to get these guys done tonight. Oh, Gretchen, aren't, aren't those just adorable? So she's done, she's doing 12, uh, 12 of these little houses and they are so sweet and they're 3D and they're made out of felt. Um, they're just really kind of darling and there's just tons of a little embroidery on it and it, they would just be so cute sitting around I kind of want to make the summer ice cream stand one that's just adorable 
but the one we are going to be doing here is the latest release. She just released it today, and it is the Spooky Clock Tower, and it's really cute. It's very Halloween-y. Um, I think it's going to be fun, fun to do. Oh yes, the lighthouse is adorable as well. So many cute things. So in my email that I sent today, I, sh I share some of the photos of the ones that she already released. Some of them, there's a lot released already. Uh, and the one that we'll be working on as well. All right, so uh, again, we're doing the same thing we've done in uh, these past uh, three. So be sure to watch some of those videos too. Uh, and I am just lining up my outside, my lines on the background with my lines on the fabric piece. And I'm just going to throw a pin in here. This, this is one of those small applique pins. Okay, I need more thread. I'm using the 50 weight thread and my little size 11 straw needle. It's just a, l a little bit of a longer needle and it's skinny. That size 11 is a skinnier size than I usually work with, but it works great for, for needle turn. Okay, let's trim my little thread here. Okay. So I trimmed my piece with like a about a three sixteenth of an inch. A little a little more than an eighth and a little less than a full quarter. Although this is actually kind of a quarter. Um, I probably could have trimmed a little bit more. All right, we are gonna start by just flipping this edge around, turning it with the needle. Needle, hence the needle turn. And I'm matching that outside line, or the, the line on the front fabric with the line on the back fabric. And just to start, I'm going to hold that with my thumb. And I'm going to come from the back. And I'm going to catch just a couple threads of that front fabric on that fold. I'm going to go around in that spot again just to kind of lock it in place. So into the back fabric and then to the front front fabric again there. All right. And I'm going to try stitching it on the table today. We'll see how that works. I took my um, extension table off of off of my um, sewing machine. So I have, uh, I'm, a, I'm like four inches lower than, than usual. It was just too high on, on my shoulders before. So I did see someone do this. I'm going to try this where it's on the table and I'm actually going to swoop, swoop um, the seam allowance over as much as I can. And again, we're, we're trying to match up this line on the front piece with the back piece with the background square. That looks good. So I think we are just going to hold this there, hold it flat against the table. And I'm going to put the needle in right um, kind of where I started, but only in the background fabric. And then I'm going to stitch like an eighth of an inch away. And then I'm going to come up through the front and, and the back fabric where I'm just getting like that couple little threads on the front fold the front fabric fold there. Okay, and then I'm going directly across just in the back fabric and then up through the front fabric again, stitch length away. So I looked everywhere for that video and I couldn't, this needle turn video that I was seeing, um, they did something with the pin where uh, like they, they swooped it under there's so many different ways of doing that and doing needle turn and everyone's got their style. So I like trying different things just to see what feels, feels best for me, you know? So today we're kind of trying just working on flat on the table instead of holding it in my hands, kind of how I was doing it. So I think what they did is they got their little, uh, their nice straightaway going. And then I think they pinned it down. 
So they're kind of almost pinning, pinning that fold into place. I think this is how that person did it. I, I looked all over for that video. It had, um, I think someone posted it in our crafters group, but I couldn't find it there. So I don't know if it disappeared or something. And I thought I had saved it in my saved videos, but I guess I did not. Um, but they had a special little trick with that needle or with the pin, I mean. It seemed like it go, went really quickly, but uh, we are doing a little bit of what I remember from, from that. But I wanted to see how she, how she did her outer curves and everything. All right, we're approaching that um, that point here, so I'm going to just keep swooping. I am holding it a little backwards than what I'm used to. So I'm used to holding it in my hand like this and uh, going from... Uh, right to left and just kind of tucking it under and making a stitch and then tucking it under a little bit more and making a stitch. Um, now I'm trying to do it this way where I lay it flat on the, um, flat on uh, my surface here. I'm already fraying this quite a bit because I'm handling it quite a bit. Um, and then I'm trying to stitch by just pressing it down and that's, it's, it's a new feeling for me, so this is a little awkward. But again, I'm trying a new, new to me technique today. In general, it seems to be working. I'm, I'm just concerned about when I come to these points, if I can, like I feel like I need to lift it up to manipulate them a little bit more. So I think it'll be a lot of up, down, practice for me today here. All right, so I'm going to do the stitch to the point. Ooh, coming out a little bit, yeah. Maybe when she came to point, she lifted it up again. I'm not sure. I like the Apple Blossoms Quilt Tutorials on back basted needle turn. Oh, Jenna, I'll have to look at that. There are so many ways to needle turn, and there's so many ways to do like, um, not cheating needle turn, but, but like amplified needle turn. Like if you use uh, freezer paper or, or glue, or you pre-turn all your seams, uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it. So definitely experiment and see what works best for you. I kind of like the idea of like this, I, I just call it like super pure <laughs> uh, needle turn applique where it's just you're taking a needle and you're turning it and you're stitching it down. I think there's something special about that. So I'm trying to get a little bit better at just just straight needle turn applique like, like this. All right, I am going to just... Ah, I'm going to try and do it where I keep my... keep everything on on the, the flat surface. Because the thing is, if I was doing a gigungus quilt, I would not necessarily be able to handle it like this, right? I wouldn't be able to grab it like that. I maybe could grab a quilt a little bit like that, but not very easily. So if I can do all these like corners and curves on a flat surface like this, that would be kind of a neat trick. So that's that's what I'm practicing. So all right, I'm, I'm swooping it under. It seems to be staying in place all right, which is kind of cool, considering that it's very bulky at this point. All right, so I'm going to start stitching this next side down. I'm going in that point area again catching that little edge. You know, I'm stabbing myself a whole lot less just by putting it on the flat surface too. So that's a benefit. <laughs> I feel like maybe for working on a flat surface like this, I may be working in the wrong direction for me. I think it would be easier to work 
Yeah, I think it might be easier for me to work right to left instead of left to right. So I don't know, maybe the next leaf we'll have to try the opposite direction. Oh yeah, pre-turning, pre-turning. Um, we have done several versions of that where we pre-turn the uh, seam allowance here and it really does make it pretty dang slick to stitch down. It goes so fast and it's so easy. I mean, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of upfront work by pre-turning it and you can do that in several ways like with, with um, freezer paper or by just starching the edges over a template a little bit. Um, so it, it, it's a lot of work up front, but dang, with all these edges folded all over already and you just have to stitch it down, that's really relaxing. Oh, Robin! That would be amazing. That would be amazing. I, I can't read your full comment on here. Um, I'll have to, I'll, I'll look it up afterwards though. How fun would that be? All right. This is a, I'm liking this though. I do have to just pay attention to like my shoulders. I still feel like I'm scrunching my shoulders up uh, quite a bit yet. Um, so I'm probably not quite low enough here yet. I think this is going pretty quick, this technique, but like I said, I think I'm going to try going in the opposite direction um, for the next, for the next leaf, and then maybe, maybe I'll have it down <laughs> by then. Again, I think with needle turn, it's all about a lot of practice and a lot of, um, for me at least, it was a lot of trying out people's tips. Like, just on my own, I could not get these corners and I could not get like inner points and inner curves. Like they just were not working well at all until I learned a couple of tricks. And uh, after that, it just all, those that improved so much my my curves and my inner points we haven't had to do an inner point yet um but yeah so it's practicing and then trying different techniques and that's again that's why we're trying this on the table sort of technique today and i think like i said i think if i'm stitching in the opposite direction that might work better for me you actually have to be holding the squaring hand when you needle turn. Just gives me more control. Uh, Jackie, I'm, 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 I feel that same way. Like I like holding it like this. I can get up close. I can see and I can hold it really close here. That is definitely more comfortable for me right now. And uh, um, that's, uh, this, this is how I would prefer to do it. But I'm giving another, I'm giving it a different way a try for the night. Um, just to see what I like about it and what I don't like about it. I mean, people do it this way for a reason. I'm, I want to kind of try and glean what that is. Uh, for sure, the idea of that if you had a whole quilt and you couldn't just grab it in your hands, um, like a square like this, I could see a flat surface like this being great if you got good at this. Um, See, I'm lifting it up with my hands again. Eh, no, I'm not. I'm going to try and do it on the, on the table. I keep trying to cheat. So in the end, I will, um, I will just, you know, choose what I like doing the best. But, you know, sometimes it's fun or it's nice to know a couple different techniques for the same um, thing because you never know when you might run into a situation where your normal way of doing it just all of a sudden just isn't isn't working and a different technique is the is the way to go so it's good to you know know that other technique and at least practice it a little because it might come in handy might come in handy later so i'm just trying to get this last little 
bloop under, and we still have a lot of the bulk from this point still. There we go. This really does feel like I'm stitching in the wrong direction though, so we are gonna we are gonna try the opposite way. Even though maybe I'll feel like I'm stitching even more in the wrong direction, but we'll we'll see. That letter E, um, our last leaf. This one will I'll try it. I'll try it on the table still. We'll still try the table technique and uh, or the flat surface technique. I don't know what the technique's called. I'm calling it. I'm calling it the table technique. Um, we'll try that. I'm just going to try stitching in the opposite direction, which I think actually might be quite awkward now that I'm thinking about it. Um, we're going to give it a try, though. Because when I'm holding it, I don't... When I'm holding it, I stitch in the current direction that I am, but I feel like I can't see my stitch as well. And I have to keep pulling this way instead of this way when I'm done, so... Some people do this way, but I feel like I'd have to do that with my left hand. I don't know. We're giving it a try. A little fuzzle escaped. I'm just trying to tuck that under. All right, I think this next stitch will be the last one in this little edge here. And we'll go around that spot again. And, uh, be our last stitch there. So all right, all this was done on the table. It's a little bloopy. This is this uh, little uh, point is kind of kind of swooping up like that a little bit. So I am definitely not practiced in this way of doing it. And that's what we're doing now, I suppose, though. I think it looks pretty cute still, though. All right, just tying a little knot here. Okay, and let's trim this. I don't, I'm gonna cut a new piece of thread. I don't think this is quite long enough for me for the next piece. Looking cute though. All right, um, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do that last one and I'm gonna try, I'm gonna still try stitching on the table, but in the opposite direction. We'll just see what that's like. For some reason I feel like I can, I'd be able to pull my needle a little bit easier. We're gonna give that a try. A little backwards. So just cutting out my last piece. This is the last leaf too. I'm, I'm I'm done with this fabric now. Crazy. Done with that fabric. All right, let's uh, line up our edges again. So there is one thing, uh, although, I mean, maybe it's just because we're doing small pieces, but with some larger pieces, instead of using pins, you can actually stitch like a basting stitch, so like a big running stitch about um, the quarter or like a, a little further in from, from the edge, like a quarter inch in from the edge, and then you can tuck it under up to your basting line, um, really. So... That's something like in traditional needle turn that we aren't doing here that would be fun to try. Like I would love to do a Hawaiian uh, style quilt one of these days. Um, that would be a, like a forever project though. One of these ones that you start and it take years and years and years. But that's like those, um, I'm talking about those applique projects. It's like a whole cloth quilt with like a whole cloth um, detailed cutout design, kind of like a snowflake. The fabric's folded a bunch and, uh, um, you know, like how you'd make a snowflake and then you 
applique that giant piece down, and I just think that would be just so pretty and fun. Oh, Gail says she did three uh, leaves earlier today, and they're so lumpy and funky crazy. Yeah. That, yes. <laughs> it took me a long time to get out to this point, and um, a lot of, like, what I have kind of going here, where I have some lumps here, and, you know, it's swooping here, and it kind of bumpy there, um, those were definitely exaggerated quite a bit on many of my, you know, points like this, uh, many of my first needle turn, and obviously, you know, these could be more graceful and stuff too. Um, so yeah, lot to, lot to learn. All right, so I'm gonna try working this way this time. Okay, so I'm gonna, this is kind of backwards in my head, but I think, I think my hands are gonna like where things end up. Okay. I'm gonna just fold this over to start. So I'm holding it in my hands again, which I didn't want to do, but just for this first stitch. All right, so I'm gonna try and go to the left this time instead. Oh, a Hawaiian pillow. Well, there you go, Barbara. That's what I should do. Instead of thinking about it like a gigongous um, quilt, just do like a, just a nice pillow, like a nice big throw pillow. Okay, well that, that's a good idea. <laughs> that's not as daunting, is it? All right, so. Okay, I can see what I'm doing better and I feel, ouch, like I feel like my hand can go in the correct um, direction. So already I'm feeling like this direction is is better for me for this table table way of doing it. We'll see. We'll see how we keep going here. I'm telling you though this is still more comfortable just holding it in my hand. But we're trying something else. Yep, Kathy, um, it's definitely more comfortable so far. I felt like I was stitching backwards. Um, even though it is the same direction that I stitch when I hold it, but on the table it felt backwards. Oh, maybe if I held it like this, it... Oh, no, I know why. Because when I hold it, I gotta hold the fabric folded under. So it makes sense to go the other way then. But for the table, this is feeling good so far. All right, I feel like I gotta swoop in this direction though. There we go. And then I gotta hold down, turn it back. <laughs> Whatever works, I guess. And these are some pretty graceful. Um, little arcs here. I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to use this table method for all the small turns and twists and stuff of these, of the paws. I still keep stabbing myself this way too. Um, ooh, that kind of came up. So I don't know. This might be it for uh, this table way of doing it uh, for today, but, or I mean for for this piece, the needle turn piece, but uh, I am happy I'm giving it a go a little bit. I do feel like this might come in handy in certain situations. And obviously this is my like second leaf ever trying it, so I'm sure it's one of those things that you get more comfortable with, or you're like, oh, I just have to hold it this way. Well, now it all is comfortable and works perfectly, you know? So I feel like I, I there's something yet to discover <laughs> uh, to really perfect this way, for sure. But for now, we're giving it a go. All right, I'm just gonna get rid of that guy. Uh, let's try and flip 
this point under. I definitely got a little pointy bit of the leaf there, but I think that's fine. I'm picking it up again. Oh well. Actually, I'm going to try leaving it on the table. It is actually these, um, having it on the table is easier to swoop these um, points under, I do have to say, because I can start and just kind of swoop it and then I can go a little lower and swoop that. And my finger is here to just keep kind of collecting, holding down that bulk. So this is kind of working, I think. Just kind of taking my time. There we go, we got a leaf going, leaf point going on. There we go. So now I'm gonna just twist it up again here and get those first little tacks down. Oops, the bustle got away. Let me get back underneath there. Uh, I had an applique pin on, but once you get um, once you get some stitching down, and you don't you don't always need that applique pin anymore. Like once I got this side down, then I felt like I didn't need it anymore in my hand. My finger on this side was going to be holding it down quite a bit. So it's easier to swoop in this direction, I feel like, but it's easier to stitch in the other direction. And I'm still line. I'm still trying to line up the lines on the top fabric piece with the bottom fabric line still. Trying to tweak that a little bit. I don't know. I think it's still, I feel like I'm tweaking my neck by having to angle it and look down a little bit. I think holding it is still a little bit easier, except for now that. Now if I held it, it would be backwards. <laughs> like I'd be holding it this way, but maybe that's easy. I don't know. Let's try this. I haven't, I haven't held it in this direction. Okay. Yeah, this feels backwards. <laughs> I do feel, yeah, I feel like I'm trying to be ambidextrous or something right now. Uh, this is, this is just, uh, I feel like I'm going backwards from what I'm used to it this way but get a few little hand held stitches in there instead of the table Ugh, yeah I'm gonna hold it with my hand it's just more comfortable even if it's backwards now for holding it with my hand Oh, I'll look at that. Um, Sally Ann, Sally Ann Harrison. I'll look. I'll look at hers. I suspect when we um, work on the pause later this week. I am going to probably go back to what I'm comfortable with. I was stitching it by holding it like I am now, but going the other direction. We'll see. All right, I'm to this point. Go around again. Oops, caught my edge of my block there. All right. <laughs> now I feel backwards still. All right, let's let's just lay it on the ground again, I guess, and try and start swooping 
this bulk underneath. Let's fold it a little bit first. Okay, yeah, that's feeling awkward. We're getting up in here again. This is all good practice. Just gonna try and even out this edge a little bit. Get that seam allowance so it's not so folded underneath. Start attaching that. Ugh, now I'm for sure backwards. There we go. Eh, good to try stuff. We gotta try a few things, things today. I feel good about that. That's the for me. That's the whole point of this blended sampling too, is to try try some new things and to practice practice uh, things I'm a little less comfortable with. And wow, I really got this point awfully goofy. Um, so we will definitely continue our needle turn applique uh, learning practice. Oops, lost my needle there. I still think all these leaves look pretty cute. Oops. Oof, it's getting really raw edge, so let's get a clean cut. Oh, Barbara, that's awesome. Yeah, I am so with you. That's kind of how my la how this first splendid sampler quilt was for me. I, I kind of described it as I felt like I could fake my way in a room of crafter of, of quilters. I mean, uh, like if I if you had to go in a for some reason a giant room and mingle and network or just ugh, mingle with a pile of professional quilters, you know, and try and be on that level. I felt like I could get by with faking it before I started the Splendid Sampler. But after the first Splendid Sampler, I totally feel like I could have held my own with anyone else in that in that room, you know what I mean? So so that's that's a big it was a big confidence builder, you know, not to mention, you know, learning and practicing learning a pile of new tips and and tricks and um, just getting some practice in, uh, doing things I haven't done before. Like it, it just was, I feel like it was like a crash course in all things um, quilting and, and, and uh, making blocks and that sort of thing. So um, I'm feeling that way with, with this second one as well too. The second one, I feel like the first one was more learning and this one is more practice now practicing some of the stuff that we learned. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, I think uh, my yesterday or my Friday's um, Friday's leaves are a bit more graceful. Uh, that was in the way that I'm used to doing it. And after a, a practice one, these ones are looking kind of clunky. Uh, but again, I was trying that new to me technique of doing it on a flat surface a little bit. I don't know, holding it is still, I think, the most comfortable for me. But we have the leaves done and they're looking awfully cute. It's starting to come together now. Uh, let's, let's just peek. So the next part, we have all of our um, hands here, our little paws. So that's the second paw, this is the first paw, and this is the third paw. And it's so big because like we have all the little like finger nubbins and that that first pad there um we have to have them far apart like we couldn't draw them like this onto our fabric 
because we need that like three sixteenths uh, seam allowance around all of it. So, but I kept them together so I wouldn't lose things. Exactly, Gus. Natural leaves need not be smooth. Uh, perfect. I like it. Okay, so I'm just I'm just kind of peeking at what what this will look like. Oh, I think it's just going to be really nice. I like, I really am happy with the colors we chose for this one. I think it still has that subtle feel to it. And uh, we'll try and do the same with the embroidery. Um, it'll just be like this nice, pale, subtle little bouquet. And I think, I think it's just going to be really fun. So I I'm really happy with it so far. And those leaves are adorable. And we are done with that fabric completely. Uh, so we will um, work on these pads next, these little paws right here. Um, so that will probably be Wednesday or Thursday though, because tomorrow I will be showing you uh, all the parts for that, for the Betts uh, White Project, the Little Felt Village, the spooky, the spooky uh, clock tower. And uh, um, we'll start cutting out the felt for that and, and putting the template pieces on it and trimming that. I want to get that as far as we can. And we may actually get close to finish with that tomorrow. So we might be back on this on Wednesday, um, Thursday at the latest, I'm, I'm thinking. So uh, that's the plan for the next couple days. Uh, I'm going to flip you guys around and we'll call it an evening here. All right, so those did not take all that long, even though we are playing with a little bit of a new technique. I will look up some of those other um, some of those other needle turn applique people that you guys were, were mentioning, you know, needle turn is one of the things that I feel the least confident about as of some of these techniques, but I'm actually having some of the best time, like practicing, practicing it. Um, I think it is just some techniques and some practice for the, for the needle turn. So I, I, I am, I am liking it. I do like the feel of needle turn. It's, it's something I do want to get good at. Um, so I'm excited about it still, which is, which is nice. It's nice to be excited about learning something. Uh, so I will check out some more videos. We'll try a few more things. Uh, right now the winner for me is holding the block in, in the hand like this and then uh, turning and stitching. I'm talking about just the, the, like the pure needle turn, you know, not the where you pre-do the um, pre-turn any of the stuff. That, to me, that's like a different thing, uh, even though it is technically needle turn. Uh, but as far as just literally taking the needle to turn the edges under, uh, I am liking the holding it technique the best so far. So uh, we'll see what else is out there, and we'll give it a go. And uh, that is that. So I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies again tonight. And yeah, tomorrow I will take a look at all the stuff I got from Joanne. So uh, if you are participating in that uh, spooky clock tower, um, we'll be looking at the supplies tomorrow. It can be a little daunting, like what's the right felt to buy and all that. And that's what I wanted to show in my newsletter uh, tomorrow. So uh, take a look at that. And I will see you guys tomorrow here on the Penguin and Fish page on Facebook at 8.30 Central. See you tomorrow, guys. Good night.